Hello, I am Jayanthu Chatterjee. We are discussing management of field sales. This is the fourth lecture of our third week set of sessions. In this session and in the next session, I am going to discuss the considerations that you should have to prepare yourself for getting into a sales negotiation. Negotiation is a very important part of uh, a sales uh, person's life. And uh, whether uh, whatever level you are in, in the sales hierarchy, whether you are uh, just a field sales person or you are actually a vice president of sales, you will have to get into negotiation situation with the uh, customers. So let's try to understand, first of all, uh, this whole concept of uh, value and value-based uh, pricing and uh, the range, determination of the range over which this uh, uh, negotiation can take place, particularly with respect to uh, price. So this uh, particular uh, diagram that you see on your screen, uh, on the upper block shows the sales process and the buying process, etc., uh, which we have already discussed. Uh, but the more important point here, you, I, I want to draw your attention uh, to the block which is given below the top block, uh, which is the customer value measurement approaches. This is actually how at different stages, the customer perceives different set of uh, values and therefore your negotiation has to tune uh, towards uh, these different aspects of value assessment by the customer uh, for better uh, or more efficient negotiation. This diagram very nicely uh, represents uh, the various elements that we are going to discuss just now. Incidentally, uh, a good part of uh, uh, this presentation is inspired uh, by this particular book. Uh, this is called uh, Principles of Marketing Engineering and it is uh, written by Professor Lillian and Professor Arvind uh, Rangaswamy and uh, Arno de Bruun. Now, uh, even if this book you cannot uh, find very easily in your library, uh, then I would say that you go to um, the internet, lot of their lectures uh, of uh, Professor Lillian and Professor Rangoswami are available as uh, PowerPoints as well as um, uh, audiovisual presentation on uh, through general search as well as on YouTube. And so uh, besides this PowerPoint that you can access, you can see the details as uh, provided by them if you want to uh, dig deeper into some of these concepts. Okay, let's look at uh, this chart first, first of all, this side of the chart. So you see, uh, anything that is produced and shipped out of a factory or of an establishment, selling establishment, at the base we'll have this cost of goods and services. Uh, sometimes in short, in uh, uh, profit and loss statement, etc., uh, in financial statements, this will be written as COGS, cost of goods and services. Uh, this normally will include the material cost, the labor cost, the overhead cost, you know, including electricity and other stuff that will go into as inputs into the final uh, output. Then there are uh, various other elements that may come into picture like the uh, sales and marketing cost and uh, uh, relevant costs which happen outside uh, the factory. Uh, if you add all of those, then you come to something which is called 
total cost, right? And suppose this is the level of price that is uh, charged or that is could be obtained from the marketplace. This uh, is often incidentally uh, uh, pegged at a level lower than what could be obtained. And this is the purpose of today's discussion. So first of all, this difference between the price that is finally obtained versus uh, the cost of goods and services with which you start uh, out of the factory, this difference is what we call value added. Okay. Now, if this is the level of the price and actually logically this is the value that uh, could be charged logically. I'll just now show you uh, with some calculations how that will happen. Then uh, that minus the perceived value by the customer. That means the logical value could be here, but the customer's perceived value could be somewhat lower. And between these two, what we have what is called the potential value lost. So as you can see here easily that often products are sold at, a, uh, at something called price because uh, many uh, sellers have this cost plus pricing approach. So if this is the total cost, then you take some kind of percentage on top of that and you set the price. But what this presentation is showing you is that if you dig deeper, do some more research and understand that what is actually the logically chargeable value or at least you determine that what customer will perceive as a value, then you can see that this is a difference is price to perceived value is an improvement that could be done. Now, obviously, if your product is not that good or if you actually have not positioned it that well or if your targeting is not good, so you see here, there is a close relationship between uh, segmentation and targeting, uh, positioning and the pricing. If it is pos uh, well positioned, then perceived value should be higher than the uh, price. But uh, if it is not, then actually the perceived value could be lower than the price and then obviously your sale will decline at that stage. Now, uh, this difference between this, this what we call the value created versus uh, where you could go, this is something that we can call it as the uh, value creation opportunity. Let's take uh, an example instead of this model, we can come back to this model. Uh, the, let's take an example. This example I have taken from uh, Professor uh, Lillian Rangaswamy's uh, book, Marketing, Engineering, and Analytics. Uh, this is the third edition. So suppose a steel manufacturer has developed a new type of steel. Uh, let's call it rapid form or RF, uh, which is actually the terminology used. And it is being used for mufflers, you know, the sound uh, mufflers uh, used in automotives, uh, automobiles, uh, cars, trucks, and so on. And uh, this material is being used to create a part like this. And uh, two things the new material uh, will be offering. One, it will be reduced scrap because uh, the manufacturing process matches the material in such a way that scrap is reduced uh, and uh, it runs faster, the whole thing. With respect to currently being used high carbon steel, uh, in short, we'll call it uh, RF and HC. So RF steel uh, does much better than uh, HC steel with respect to these two factors. And what happens therefore? Therefore, in high carbon steel, Suppose uh, two pounds uh, per part at 60 cents per pound. I have taken 
the example as given in their books. So uh, we are using these American, uh, uh, you know, they use pounds for uh, weight measurement there as still, not kilograms. And, uh, and this is the price level, 60 cents, um, 0.6 of a dollar. And suppose 25% is the scrap rate if you are using high carbon steel and 30 cents is the machine time. See, we are, we, are, we are determining the COGS, cost of goods sold. And with rapid form, uh, two pounds per part, the part remains the same. And we are trying to determine that what should be uh, the logical price level, okay? And because uh, as we discussed earlier that RF steel reduces scrap, so the scrap has come down from 25%, it can be brought down to 5% and it is uh, a faster processing with RF steel. So instead of uh, 80 cents machine time, here we will need uh, 70 cents for machine time. Then you see we can easily set up this particular equation which is uh, 2 pounds into 60 cents plus 80, which is the machine time, 80 cents, uh, divided by 1.25. Uh, this gives you, uh, the 1.25 comes from the 25% uh, scrap rate, right? So uh, this is the situation. On the other hand, uh, 2 pounds into uh, the price that we are trying to determine, plus 0.7 divided by uh, 1 minus 0 0.05 because the scrap rate has now become 5% as opposed to 25%. Uh, then you see, we can easily calculate that the, with the RF type of steel, the value, that means the logically or mathematically chargeable price should be 92 cents uh, per pound as opposed to 60 cents uh, per pound, right? What is the situation here? That actually currently suppose the price level is here, 0.68. Uh, that means uh, 0.6, some margin added to that uh, leads to 0.68. Obviously, this is the range between 0.68 dollars and 0.92 dollars, which is a salesperson's Negotiation uh, target, if the salesperson is going to the market with RF steel uh, product rather than uh, the current high carbon steel. So if you are selling something new, innovative, something better, uh, something which is clearly differentiable, uh, then this is the discussion with respect to pricing and negotiation. So 0 0.68 to 0.92, this is the range. But in uh, reality, uh, what can happen is that you may not be able to go to 92 cents, which is actually the logically calculated customer value. But the customer's perceived value could be somewhere lower than that. Uh, because uh, uh, when you describe that what are the advantages you are giving, then the customer will be willing to pay you something higher and uh, the customer may not actually uh, be prepared to pay up to 92 cents uh, and you may be able to negotiate somewhere here. Uh, this difference is sometimes called the potential value lost. But at least it is very important as you see here that with proper sales uh, technique which we have discussed based on uh, focusing on benefits and advantages before you come to features, the fab type of selling that we discussed, one should be able to take this uh, price to this uh, type of level. And let's see uh, what are the different ways uh, we do that. Uh, in between I want to insert this concept that uh, this RFM model, which gives you some kind of prioritization uh, process that which are the customers where you should uh, focus first uh, when you are trying to establish uh, a new version of a product, 
an improved version of a product. In this case, that RF steel uh, as opposed to high carbon steel. You actually uh, take recency, that means uh, um, the time uh, since the last purchase. So the more recent the case has been, uh, and the, the more uh, recent is the last opportunity, uh, you are in a better position or it is more important in your uh, targeting profile to focus on that. Similarly, frequency, the number of purchase occasions since uh, first purchase, that means how many times the customer is purchasing, how regularly the customer is purchasing. Obviously, that has a higher weightage. And the monetary value, the amount spent uh, since the first purchase. So, uh, this uh, RFM score is obtained by R score, F score and M score. So, uh, and then you can assign some points and then based on that you can uh, evaluate uh, different types of opportunities and uh, accordingly assign your priority where you need to establish the new pricing level. Uh, this kind of gives you that uh, calculation uh, process that uh, the different uh, elements and uh, and and the oh no so this this one is actually a little different this chart this chart actually shows that uh, three brands brand a b c and and d suppose this is the new brand that you are trying to uh, bring in and based on those factors that we discussed about you know it takes uh, it less scrap and uh, better throughput and so on so what you can do is therefore compared to the other three brands Suppose your performance is at 0.6 level, the quality, variety uh, and value, these are the different values and accordingly you can actually find out that uh, this is the importance. So if you multiply this and add, then it can give you some idea about where your uh, D product uh, can be positioned, uh, what, what kind of uh, perceived value you can guess. Um, incidentally. Uh, don't take these values as derived from that high carbon steel versus RF steel. It is uh, a, a case. It is just a, a general uh, mathematical expression that if there are three brands and you are coming in with a new brand and that new brand with respect to the other brands has this kind of aspect with respect to performance, quality, variety then and value. Then, uh, then this is the importance of this. This importance will come from uh, customer survey, you know, talking to the direct customers and finding out that which uh, element has what kind of weight. And based on that, uh, or importance, based on that you can then find out that what could be the logically uh, or rather logically and uh, perceptually targetable value. So these are the different uh, ways you can actually approach and of course here we will also include the probability of purchase and uh, uh, the volume and that will give us some kind of a uh, customer's expected dollar idea. What we were just now discussing that, that depending on an improved or distinguishable product attributes how you can actually calculate the uh, and the new targetable price and so that you know that this is what I am I'm aiming at through my negotiation. And uh, now I am going to present some of the other uh, information technology uh, related aspects uh, which is also important when you are going for a, a negotiation and uh, is that background creation of this marketing database. This marketing database is uh, created on the basis of the various inputs that are coming from the field sales activity that we discussed about prospecting, uh, uh, you know, hot prospects, warm prospects and so on. So from the promotion and response, you are getting different uh, inputs and uh, there are surveys and preferences uh, examined. Uh, the surveys and preferences are important for uh, this particular model that we discussed just now uh, about that what is more important to the customer and to what extent more important. Then based on that, you can therefore have this uh, 
model score, uh, the recency, frequency, and uh, monetary value uh, calculation. So based on that, therefore, you can have a whole list of customers prioritized according to uh, the importance coming up from this. And that actually then gives you uh, where you want to go to, or which customer you are going to call on today, tomorrow, day after, uh, etc. This particular approach is uh, very good and often used, but there are some drawbacks which you should, we should know that it actually, because we are looking at recency, frequency, etc., uh, this that uh, RFM module, uh, a model that has a disadvantage that sometimes it can ignore uh, potentially, suppose a customer is now buying in small quantity, uh, buying infrequently, but that customer's business has a potential of high growth over the next five years. And therefore, uh, when you are actually uh, doing this calculation based on the immediate history, you might uh, ignore the potential growth. So uh, this is a drawback of this particular uh, model. If we, we can improve on the model, then we can actually introduce in that uh, the possibility of uh, future growth. And therefore, we can actually uh, create a graph where actually we take today's RFM valuation and with some probability added to it, we can go to uh, that what could uh, value over the next year, year after, and so on. In all uh, these cases, it's very important to understand a, a, a topic that we have discussed right from the beginning, that in today's sales world, uh, loyalty is very, very customers, delight-based, trust-based, relationship-based uh, loyalty orientation is very important. Because longer you have a customer with you, uh, better will be your gain, uh, monetary gain. So uh, as you can see here, we are showing that uh, we have a, a annual profit, uh, base profit, and then uh, the increase in demand, price premium that can be charged by better uh, positioning and uh, cost saving and relationship value. So you see, over time, this builds, uh, the column goes up and up. And uh, also, uh, it actually shows that the uh, performance over a long term becomes much better if you have relationship, because many of your costs actually, the costs of uh, sales and marketing it uh, goes down and that's quite a significant cost and therefore the buildup of this column becomes faster. So that's why today's uh, sales focus is on long-term relationship and not a uh, single transaction as it is shown on top. And uh, you can actually calculate this total lifetime value of the customer. One is you take uh, the economic value which is the risk adjusted revenue uh, flow, less cost to serve. That means you take revenue every uh, year that, that you are uh, able to get minus the sales and marketing and service and other costs. And then uh, you can actually assign some probability uh, of uh, maybe next year, you are definite that this kind of result can be obtained. But the year after, you may say, okay, uh, there is a 80% probability of getting that result because it's kind of distant in the future. So nothing, future cannot be uh, predicted uh, accurately. So you can uh, therefore adjust with respect to risk by multiplying by that probability factor. And, uh, uh, and therefore, you can actually come up with a kind of a uh, revenue flow, uh, risk adjusted. And you can also adjust it with respect to time value of money. So if you are calculating today uh, what you are going to earn uh, three years uh, later, you discount it by the uh, usual cost of money percentage and, uh, and come up to the present value, net present value calculation. 
So one is the net present value calculation that is a direct reflection of the economic value of a customer. But there are other uh, uh, understandings that you can get from uh, this previous chart that there is something called relationship value. The relationship value you see in the earlier chart is right on top and as you see as the uh, time goes the relationship value block becomes bigger and bigger and the cost saving block becomes smaller and smaller. This is the whole issue uh, the, the basis or the rationale of the relationship uh, based uh, trust based sales uh, superiority. So the relationship value comes uh, by different ways uh, reference to other customers which has a very powerful force as we discussed earlier uh, and uh, learning from that customer and also innovation uh, that can happen because of customer's input. Uh, if a customer has good relation with you, the customer will come up with ideas how the product uh, service combination, good service combination can be improved. And that is an excellent source for uh, um, product enhancement. So this is kind of uh, uh, a, a simple projection uh, that shows that uh, expected revenue cash flow minus the cost to serve cash flow and uh, uh, expected profit cash flow with risk adjustment that it means probability uh, factor introduced and this gives you the risk adjusted cash flow. So obviously our idea will be uh, so the loyalty uh, does two things. One is that it reduces the cost to serve, right? And uh, the, the better is the relationship, uh, better is the uh, understanding between the two organizations and uh, lower will be your cost to serve. Uh, straight away, of course, something goes down is the marketing cost, but otherwise also uh, the, the service uh, provision costs will be lower and uh, the risk adjustment also will be lower because if you uh, have better relationship then you will know uh, in better depth that what is the likelihood of the customer uh, giving you that level of business three years from now. Whatever are their internal uh, estimates with respect to their own sales projection they will share with you and that will give you a better understanding. And, and, and this obviously our aim is to uh, in maximize this that improves us, takes us to a finally much better situation with respect to this which is the lifeblood of the business, risk adjusted cash flow. And uh, to conclude, uh, let me just uh, put forward uh, this uh, simple cl classification of the different types of accounts uh, uh, which is uh, kind of you can say will give you the uh, negotiation profile what kind of so one is the reference account these are the accounts which are providing us uh, uh, referrals to other serving as an example to a new intending customer it establishes our credibility enhances our reputation all of that so that those are called reference accounts, always the most important of the accounts in today's world where retention is more important than acquisition. And uh, besides uh, reference accounts are accounts which you can refer to, but referral accounts, slight variation, are accounts where uh, the customers uh, actively will give you lead uh, to other opportunities. So this high quality lead provision is another fantastic advantage we get uh, from those customers with whom we have good relationship. And then there are learning accounts. Uh, these are accounts where uh, we are uh, able to try new products without uh, in, in confidence so that if there are some bugs or there are some deficiencies in the product, the customer is not going to bad mouth you in the marketplace and we rather 
give you inputs how to take care of those and which are the bugs, which are the problems. So the, we also sometimes call them as a beta uh, customers. Uh, these beta customers uh, are important uh, because these are accounts where, which help us to augment, enhance the product. And then innovation accounts, these are the accounts who are like the early adopters so they are the people who will possibly be good recipient for your new offerings. And so accordingly, we can uh, create this uh, chart, uh, which is uh, how we will uh, customer portfolio we will analyze and uh, negotiation targets we will analyze. So on one hand, we have high relationship value and high economic value. So obviously this green quadrant which are customers who provide high economic value as well as high relationship value will be our first priority. Our second priority may be here and we will try to improve the economic value of this quadrant and move them more towards this as well as um, we will try to take uh, this quadrant where the economic value is high but our current relationship value may be low, how to take them towards this. So moving this quadrant towards this quadrant and this quadrant towards this quadrant will be our sales strategy uh, inputs. So in short, in today's session, we briefly discussed about the idea of uh, cost of goods sold and uh, total cost uh, versus uh, what is the perceived price uh, considered fair uh, by the customer and the logical price which one can calculate uh, by way of uh, the advantages and performance improvements offered by a, a new product. And as we discussed that uh, usually uh, the perceived price for a better product will be higher than the current ruling price because the customer has a, a better perception for that new product, but usually it will be lower than what is the logically calculated uh, chargeable price. And as a salesperson, our aim should be to push that middle line. Uh, if you uh, remember, uh, let me show you that chart again uh, here. Uh, so here, uh, this is our second, uh, third slide that our aim as a sales negotiator will be to push this line as high as possible. Definitely, we should actually try to take it to this level, which is the perceived value. Uh, in rare cases, we may be able to take it to this level. Usually, it will not be possible. And so to reduce this gap, and to increase this gap, to reduce this gap between the customer value and the perceived value and uh, to increase the uh, gap between the current price level and the perceived value level is our the sales uh, negotiation uh, objectives. We discussed uh, then how uh, we calculate the kind of a, this logically chargeable price so that we know the what is the uh, you know, upside that one can go for. So again, uh, that same thing, we try to take this upwards and, and take this line as close as possible to this line. That's our whole negotiation objective. Uh, th and that will improve our margin uh, with respect to the value creation. So the maximum value uh, of, uh, one can expect uh, by increase of margin for a new improved product is this uh, the value created line. So uh, push this as much as possible and make it equal to this. This is our uh, objective. Okay. And we categorize uh, the uh, targets by this RFM recency frequency and monetary value uh, model. And then, of course, uh, uh, we also look at uh, that what percentage of the total customer base we can logically uh, aim by using this kind of a metrics uh, that we discussed. 
where how our new product D can be positioned with respect to the existing brands ABC and by looking at these factors we can calculate that uh, what could be our imputed share or uh, uh, logically achievable market share. That kind of concludes our uh, first introductory discussion on the quant quantitative aspects of uh, negotiation. Tomorrow uh, we will discuss the negotiation uh, techniques and mechanisms uh, in the sales arena. Thank you.